Oh, well, I didn't, I didn't plan that, but I think that's a perfect dovetail into the Lord's Supper, which I, I have to uh, share today. I'd like to read Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13, the story of the ten virgins. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Therefore, watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. I pray that you would uh, open it to our hearts. You would speak through me that I would only, only say your words. In Jesus' name, amen. So when I read this passage, I was reminded of the importance of being ready and of watching for the Lord's return. And there's a, there's a somber warning that there are those who, as the, the five foolish virgins, they appear to be of the group, of the bridegroom, but yet they were not prepared. They did not have the oil that they, that they needed to meet, that they needed to, to go out and meet the bridegroom when he came. And so it's possible to be of the body of Christ, to be of one of the ten virgins, but yet, or at least to be, to appear to be so, but yet not have that which is necessary to be welcomed by the bridegroom, to meet the bridegroom. It's easy in Christianity to have an, an, a perspective that says, oh, well, I'm a Christian, I've trusted in the Lord, and leave it at that. But these, this passage warns us that we should watch and be ready. And that we need to have what is essential, what is necessary. So what is this oil that it's talking about? What is it referring to? I've heard people say it's, well, it's the Holy Spirit. Um, I think it could also be said, well, it's faith because it's, um, it's what was necessary to be able to meet the bridegroom. It could also be said that it's the Word. Do you have God's Word in your heart? But I think that this is a more fundamental, more essential 
aspect of of Christianity. It's not just one one thing. It's it's the essence of our faith. The oil in the story is burned in lamps for light. Light allows us to see where we are and where we are going and allows us to see others. The light was necessary in this parable for the virgins to be able to come out to meet the bridegroom who had come. Psalm 119 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Just as a lamp gives light to our feet, God's word gives us understanding. If we do not store up the word when we have time, we will not be able to get it when it is needed. Don't wait until you need it to take time to store up God's word. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to hide God's word in your heart. But is this passage just talking about saving up enough of God's word so that we can endure to the end when Christ returns? I think it is referring to a more essential, fundamental aspect of our Christian life, and not just one element of it. Hebrews says that the word which was preached did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Oil is the essence of things. It is, extra it is the extracted, pressed, distilled, and a potent concentration of energy. Christ is the essence, the fullness, and the fulfilling of all things. He is our life, our substance, and our inheritance, our all in all. Ephesians said, says, And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So I think the chief warning of this parable of the ten virgins is do you truly have Christ? Do we have the essence of Christianity? The uh, Lord's Supper has been commanded us to do in remembrance of, of Christ and his work on the cross. With that, could I have 